In practice, when a cardiologist or a nephrologist or a neurologist diagnoses amyloid, those patients are always referred to a hematologist for management. It becomes the responsibility of the hematologist having a patient with amyloid to figure out what the specific subunit protein is. And so it's their responsibility then to determine is this AL amyloidosis or ALEC2 amyloidosis and in this instance is it a mutant ATTR amyloidosis. Previously, making the diagnosis of mutant ATTR amyloidosis was relatively unimportant because the only available treatment was liver transplantation, which is not widely available, very expensive, lots of morbidities. Now we actually have medication treatment available for the treatment of these patients, making an accurate diagnosis critically important because we have effective therapy. In the neuro TTR trial, patients were randomized in a two to one ratio between receiving active drug and placebo. This study met both of its primary endpoints. Number one, the change in neurological impairment, neurologic disability was much, much less in the treated arm compared to the placebo arm. Just as important, quality of life measures self-reported by patients showed stabilization in those patients receiving the active drug, inotiracin, compared to those on placebo that showed a linear and relatively dramatic decline in the quality of life over 65 weeks of the trial. This, was a, this is a dreadful disease. The disease burden on patients is great. So they develop heart failure. They develop progressive neuropathy that renders them confined to bed. Autonomic failure leads to intractable diarrhea. They become social pariahs. They can't get out of the house. The survival of the disease is three to 15 years with neuropathy, three to five years with cardiomyopathy. Now we have an agent that stabilizes the drug and the effect doesn't wear off over time. We've been monitoring patients up to five years and the benefits are maintained. So now they have a relatively simple weekly subcutaneous injection to take that is clearly reducing their neurological impairment, improving the quality of their life, that certainly will translate into improved survival for them. With inotiracin, monitoring is required. Patients need to have their platelet count regularly monitored and they need to be checked for glomerulitis by measuring their serum creatinine periodically and the urine protein to creatinine ratio. Since we instituted monitoring, we really haven't had any patients have to withdraw from the trial due to side effects. As a consequence, this is a pretty well tolerated patient self-administered at home. There are injection site reactions that occur, but these are generally minor and it'll, it's a great convenience for patients to be able to have a supply of medication shipped, self-administer at home, and periodically go to the laboratory nearby to get the platelet count and creatinine checked. I've been a skeptic about the treatment of this disease, which I've cared for for 30 years. Progressive, inexorable, devastating for patients. Now I'm actually firmly convinced that there's an agent that will prevent the progressive decline in neurologic function. And in my practice now, we've identified genetic carriers of the disease that are not yet symptomatic, who are watching very carefully for their first development of neuropathy, which is the indication for therapy. And I think those patients will then go on treatment and I suspect will live normal lives.